Okay, so uh, hello everyone. I'm Alexander Nekich. I'm a member of the Kernel Dynamic Tools team at Google. And today I will talk about our efforts to make Silbot reports more developer friendly. Um, we'll briefly talk about the Silbot itself, about how it attempts to facilitate bug fixing, about important changes over last year, and about our future plans. If we have time at the end, I'd be happy to hear about the difficulties you face and maybe your suggestions on what should be further improved. Uh, so, Sysbot is a continuous kernel fuzzing system. First, it checks out and builds kernels from multiple trees with multiple configurations. Then it fuzzes them using syscaller. Then over time, it collects and sends bug reports. And finally, tracks the reported issues. If you've been involved in uh, Linux kernel development, you must have seen some of our emails. There are quite a lot of them. Uh, first, Sysbot reports were sent in 2017. And since then, we report between one and one half thousand bug reports per year. We try our best to avoid false positives, so we don't send everything that we detected. As you can see on the slide, in the gray column, the, the text issues are much bigger than the brown ones, the reported issues. We intentionally skip and ignore crashes that are likely to be of little value. Also, as you can see, at least according to our accounting, quite a number of reported issues, unfortunately, remain unfixed. Uh, on the left side, you can see the distribution of bug types we report. Most of them are either warnings or case and reports. Bug type is one of the very important factors why some bugs get more attention than others. On the right side, you can see that for the reported case and bugs, almost 50% are fixed or are resolved in 100 days. For deadlocks, it's already around 40. And for info reports, it's only 30%. So what can Sysbo do to increase the share of the fixed bugs? Um, well, Sysbo tries to generate a stable reproducer for each bug it finds. Firstly, for each newly detected bug, it attempts to craft a Sys reproducer in syscaller domain specific language. Such a reproducer is an interpreted in the same environment in which the bug was originally triggered. You can see an example of such a program at the bottom of the slide. If a sys repro is successfully generated, sysbot attempts to isolate the reproducer even further down to a standalone C file. Currently, we are able to find a C reproducer for 53% of the box we report and 6% more on the have a sys repro. According to our data, uh, the existence of a reproducer greatly increases the chances of the bug becoming fixed. In 100 days after reporting, bugs with reproducers are uh, resolved one and a half times more often, as you can see on the right half of the slide. Uh, if a bug has a reproducer, Sysbot can also remove the burden of setting up the environment and running the reproducer manually. The user just needs to send a reply to the box email thread with the syscest command and specify the kernel tree to check out in the patch to apply, either as plain text or as an attachment. You can see a simple example of such a command on this slide. It asks the bot to check out the Linux tree to apply the specified patch on top of that and run the reproducer there. And after processing, Sysbot will reply with either a success message, like one on the screen, or with a failure report. Uh, all the execution logs will be attached to the box reply. And according to our data, we last year we received and served around 1,000 patch testing requests from Linux kernel maintainers. Um, yeah, yeah. If you're dealing with Sysbot reports and never use the patch testing feature, give it a try. It should be pretty convenient. 
um, as a logical continuation of reproductive generation and fetch testing, this bot also performs fix and cause by sex. This is unfortunately a tricky process, so um, it's not enabled for on all RSTs bot instances and does not always succeed. But when it succeeds, it also increases the chances of the bug becoming fixed. So as you can see on the right side of the slide, the bug has a reproducer, about 55% of of the reported bugs are resolved in 100 days. If there is also a cause by section, then it's already 65%. Um, let's look at what changed over the, during the last year. Um, for each reported bug, we have begun to share kernel build artifacts. That is the bootable disk image on which the bug was triggered and the corresponding kernel object file with the debug info. Uh, the disk image can be downloaded and run either on JCE, like Cisbot does, or on QMO. And also on this slide, you can see the part of our report that can take any such means. The other important change is related to automatic bug observation. The problem is that we're not always able to figure out whether a bug has already been fixed. Some bugs are fixed independently from being reported by Sysbot. Some bugs are fixed without letting Sysbot know. And as a result, we kept quite a number of no longer relevant bugs on our web dashboard. Bugs without reproducers were automatically closed after no crashes have been happening in a while. Now a similar approach is applied to bugs with reproducers. If existing reproducers are periodically retested on the latest kernel commit, and once no working reproducers are left, the bug is closed. In two weeks, more than 60 bugs have already been obsoleted this way, and there's more to come. Uh, the next change is related to S-Trace. Uh, S-Trace explicitly dumps these call arguments and uh, return values, so its output should help better understand what exactly led to the crash event. If a reproducer is found, syscaller runs it once more under rest trace, and if it has led to the same bug, syscaller captures and shares the output. You can find that in our emails on the console plus S trace line. It's demonstrated on the screen. Uh, and one more change is related to for subsystem fuzzing. This bot had managed to find a, an easy way to trigger lots of RCU stalls and task hangs. It liked the prevalent open call so much that it was present in almost every corpus program. And it caused lots of benign stalls and even sneaked into lots of non relevant reproducers. And now it's no longer the case. We're still fuzzing the subsystem, but on a separate instance and with much stricter rules for bug reporting. Uh, and now let's talk about the features we're planning to release in the near future. Uh, we've been receiving complaints about two problems. First, it's difficult to find all these bot bugs related to the specific kernel subsystem. One could only do a text search on the web dashboard page. And secondly, bugs reported to LKML unfortunately can get lost over time. Uh, so, so the plan is to implement and deploy an explicit bug into subsystem classification. On the web dashboard, there will appear per subsystem list of bugs, and we're also planning to send aggregated lists of still happening issues to individual kernel mailing lists. And now the question is whether we're actually able to do such a classification reliably. And here you can see the current approach that's taken by Sysbot to detect guilty files. We follow the stack trace and skip frames based on a set of rules. For example, we skip all library calls because bugs are usually in their colors. We skip sanitizer source code functions and so on and so forth. The list is actually quite big. Uh, the first non-skipped frame is said to be the guilty one. And then we just take the file where that code stays. 
from this slide, you can see that this keeps all list management functions with generic device handling code and regard to the HCI reduced the depth. Oh. And it actually turns out that even such a simple approach is quite reliable by itself. Here you can see uh, a simple experiment. For already fixed bugs, we already know, know their original crash reports and we know their fixing commits. So for reports, we can run the previous algorithm and well, we can also take the commits themselves. After feeding that data into get maintainer.pl script, uh, we, it turns out we can already guess at least one mailing list of the fixing commit in about 75% of cases. So not too bad for such a simple approach. And we're now trying to further improve on that. Um, to help debug issues for which there is no reproducers, we plan to collect and share kernel core dumps. Together with the VM Linux file, which is already shared, this can hopefully improve the current situation. And we also received complaints about uh, reproducers for files, file system bugs. So we plan to provide not only reproducers, but also raw faulty file system images that were mounted by those reproducers. Hopefully this will make the life of file system developers uh, easier. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if there is anything that was not mentioned and that could improve your own experience of dealing with our reports, please let us know either right at the conference or you could also send us an email to our mailing group. Yeah. Thank you. We have five minutes left for any questions. Any questions in the room, maybe? Okay, so I really like that feature of uh, being able to download the Sysbar, the image. So that'll help a lot of people. Um, I have, I'm currently mentoring about 19 mentees that look at Sysbar bugs and that would make their lives so much easier. And then also S trace running, um, I do that all the time. I, that's a great suggestion for, uh, that I'll share with my mentees to have them run Estres, uh, I mean, Sysbot reproducer under Estres. So thank you so much. So drop me an email when, when you have the support for uh, image ex uh, extraction or downloadable image ready so I can I can go play with that. Uh, the, we already share the downloadable image and it's not yet um, getting public. But it's not get, getting reported for 100% of our reports, but it will soon be. Okay, so thank you. You can already see the such emails. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, is the output now in KTAP format, or what's is that a possibility? If it's not, uh, could you please, please repeat the question? I so is the output of your reproducers, what's the format of that? Is it in, is it in the same, is it in KTAP output or? So there are two types of reproducers, one in an internal DSL and one in just C. And those reproducers are meant to crash your kernel. So you take, take the config and your kernel just goes. And then you can attach with a debugger or whatever. So it's not really, it doesn't really have an output except for Crash, I think, right? Uh, yes, when we report a bug, we do share the kernel configuration on which the bug was triggered, and we do share the program that crashes the kernel that was built with such a configuration. Yeah, I was going to say the most useful output of a sys, of the syspod reproducer is the kernel stack trace. Like, that's not KTAP. <laughs> Yeah, like the, the whole the whole architecture of syscaller is that we make the kernel crash deliberately on every every time the kernel looks weird 
we even crash on panic and we even panic on warning in yeah that's kind of the whole deal We have a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes left. Any more questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Alexander. And um, yeah, thank you very much for. Uh,